out of the entire series, this is the most overwhelmed I've been. Um, like borderline panic attack overwhelmed. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Marina. I do mobile home living in a trailer park in Tennessee. And here in the last few weeks, I have been working my booty off on a series of completely cleaning, decluttering, and organizing my single wide mobile home from one end to the other. I'm now on the last stretch of this series. We are tackling our master closet today, which is the last room that we have to get to in this entire house. And I have taken some things from this experience and learned a lot throughout this experience. I've learned that you cannot play hide and seek with your stuff and you cannot stow it away in a secret hiding place so other people won't see it because the fact is, it's still there and it's still in your home. It's still cluttering your home. One of the biggest takeaways of this series for me is finally coming to the conclusion that everything in my house needs a home. Otherwise it's homeless and it just floats around the house. Those things play a huge part in keeping your home tidy, believe it or not. Those are often the things that you find laying around in your floor, on your counters, on shelves. <laughs> They're in the weirdest of places because they don't have a home. They're literally couch surfers. Another thing I've picked up during this series is it doesn't matter how cute the organization method looks if it's not sustainable if it's not functional for you it's never going to be maintainable routine is super crucial not only for your home to run properly but for your family dynamic to run properly if you don't know what you're doing nine times out of ten your kids don't know what you're doing your husband don't know what he's doing it's just nobody knows what we're doing the dogs don't even know what we're doing so i've had to st establish that routine and get it down pat put it on paper and work at it every single day and it's not easy i am a messy person by nature i'm a clutter bug it is not easy but every day i remind myself that if I'm lost in the woods, my kids are lost in the woods and that's not okay with me. I play a huge role in my family and I need to lead by example. Can y'all literally believe that we are at the last episode of this series? Every inch of my house leading up to this master closet has been deep cleaned, organized as well as I can on a budget and decluttered. When I tell you this series has changed my life, I'm not even, I'm not even being dramatic. I'm a dramatic person by nature. I'm not even being dramatic. It has literally changed my life. I'm gonna do a video here shortly that shows the state of my house, not cleaned, not anything, as if you were just knocking on my door, a neighbor coming in. I'm gonna kinda of do a tour that way and show you just how well, I was about to say I, we, cause it's, it's been a family, family thing. Just how well we have maintained it. I've been doing this series for almost three weeks now, I think, almost three weeks, and this is the longest stretch my house has ever been cleaned from one end to the other all at the same time. Usually I gotta sacrifice a few rooms to make sure some of the rooms <laughs> that people see more are clean, clean. <laughs> that has not been the case with this series. I have been able to maintain my house from one end to the other for the last three weeks. That is a, that's a, that's a win. That's a win for me. Maybe a small win, but it is a huge win for me because I struggle so bad. Your girl struggles with maintaining her house. We all know this. I put myself out there on the internet and I have for two years, the good and the bad. And we all know that it's a struggle over here. <laughs> we all know I fail off the homemaking train. I don't know how many times. I have failed at homemaking so many times, but I have won at homemaking so many times too. And that's what I'm focusing on. I hope that if your house is a disaster, was a disaster, like mine was, that you either took this series or you will take this series and you'll go alongside me and clean room by room like I did and wait till the end and see, wow. No, don't neglect rooms while you're working on other rooms. Add that declutter session into the daily routine and it will work wonders for you. That's what I've done. I haven't neglected any other areas. I haven't hyper focused on one particular area of my home like I'm known to do. I'm multitasking basically on the grand level right now. I don't know if this is a mood. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just hope if it is, it stays around. Multitasking is extremely hard for me. So I'm not going to stand here and tell you it's been easy, but I will tell you it's absolutely been worth it. There have been late nights and early mornings, but it's absolutely been worth it. I have been eat, sleeping, and breathing homemaking though. Because it doesn't come easy to me, I have to really focus on living it and not just visiting it because I have visited it for two... <laughs> <laughs> I have visited it for too long. I'm bringing it in to live with me now. So there will absolutely be an updated home tour 
real life, not staged. I never staged my home tours. Y'all know I have done a straight up farmhouse home tour with a uh, four loads of laundry on my table. And people are like, how could you leave that on there? Well, I mean, if you were my neighbor, if you were my friend, which you are, you came over here, you would see that. I wouldn't hide that from you. I ain't gonna hide it from y'all. Somebody out there has a laundry basket on their table too, and maybe they need to see it. Maybe they need to know they're not alone, I don't know. So it'll be unfiltered, unstaged, nothing like that. It'll show you exactly what my house looks like on a random butt day. <laughs> and in that video, y'all will see the progress that we have made, it is huge. This is the last episode in the series though. I was gonna do all the closets in the last video, but I decided to break it in two and do my master closet in this video and the kids closets in the last video. Because in, that, in this series, I really wanted the focus to be on you don't need the clear containers you don't need the cute bins you don't need none of that to start you just need to start there is something around your house that you can find to organize stuff in and i don't care what kind of bin. i literally have my potatoes i have my potatoes in a in a clear tote on my open pantry it's working for me it's way better than the potato bags hanging over the edge and me losing taters all the time and tater running off with a tater it's working way better than those days it, is it cute probably not <laughs> Does it work? Yeah. So in this series, I wanted to show you that you could do it affordably, realistically, and not have it look Pinteresty. Pinteresty is so cute though. That is goals for me, but just right now, I mean, I'm living with this hair for right now because I literally took my hair money, my salon money I allotted myself and put it towards my outdoor shed because I wanted that worse than I wanted my hair done. So we don't focus on cute over here. <laughs> I just wanted to be functional. I wanted to do this series in a way that it would remain functional for me and not something that I could not maintain. So functionality was a big old priority to me and I wanted it to be affordable. I could not put my master closet in with that last video if I wanted it to remain affordable. A lot of you guys have told me I need to do vacuum sealed bags and I thought that was a thing in the 90s. I remember seeing infomercials about them like at 3 o'clock in the morning when you fall asleep on the couch and you hear, now for $5.99 you can get four extra large plastic bags color coded and labeled. Like I, I hadn't even seen a vacuum sealed bag since the 90s so I didn't know they still existed. Apparently they did and apparently they're really popular but they are also really pricey. I think it's they see that there's a demand for them so they think that it's justifiable to literally charge $20 for a thing of vacuum sealed bags when honestly if I had really thought I could just knock it off a trash bag and poked a little hole in it and sucked out the air of it it probably wouldn't have worked as good I need to try that if I, if I run out I'm gonna try that but I couldn't get conscious put that closet in with the closets in the last video because it's not affordable those things are pricey all the videos in this series is in a play all the videos in this series is Marina, grammar come on you got an a in english that is the only subject you excelled in ironically all of the videos i have put in this series they're all compiled in a playlist and it's labeled as the massive declutter something another 2023 if you want to watch them back to back if you want to watch them in order whatever it is they're there if you're waiting to do your spring cleaning later on if you're waiting to do a big declutter maybe you're just not ready to start those are there and they're all in order and they are all super motivated i got so motivated when i edited I got so motivated when I edited each of those videos that I literally had to stop myself from stopping editing and getting up and doing the daggone thing. Also about the music, I got a ton of comments about how much y'all love the music. Some of y'all don't. <laughs> you, I hear you loud and clear by the way. And we're about to change up the music after this video. But I wanted to set playlists to go along with the series and I've been using the same songs that I compiled in a playlist throughout the videos just in different videos they're in different places. In different videos they're lined up differently. While I do really love those songs I and myself am getting sick of them <laughs> so starting in the next video there will be a whole new set of songs I just have to go and dig I search until I find the song that I can tolerate listening to because I'm not about to make y'all suffer through weird songs there's a lot of weird songs over there but the songs I've used in the series I'll have them all wrote out in the description of this video because a lot of you guys have been asking what particular song it is if I have a list of the songs that I've been using and I don't but I'm going to put one in the description box below so that if you like any of the songs in particular you can easily find it That was as unesthetic as humanly possible. I can't pick out which one of these I want because they all smell so good. I got iridescent pearl. I got summer moonlight and pink cotton. So when all else fails, we do any mini money mo because I'm an adult toddler. <laughs> any mini money mo. Catch a tiger bot. So if he hollers, let him go. My mama told me to pick the very best one and you are it. 
We're going with Summer Moonlight. And it smells like a perfume Nanny would wear. So I don't mind. <laughs> I didn't even know it came out on my shirt. <laughs> I was just like, boy, that was some magic. <laughs> oh my gosh, today. This one is always difficult to get the wax out of. I can use the back of these old. They're not old. They're actually quite new. Like I just opened them whenever I did the kitchen declutter. But Shane broke the handle of some. So he went and bought me new ones on Amazon. These are just a tad bit darker. But they're still cute. They're almost identical though. So he's not allowed to touch these anymore. I'm going to use the back of this one because I have a new set. To try to get this out. But. Hey, I know there are so many easier ways to do this. There's, you can put a paper towel. You can do a paper towel in there. You can soak it up with cotton swab. You can just tiptoe it to the trash can while it's hot and pour it in there. Don't do that because it will burn a hole in your trash bag. Ask me how I know. There are way better ways to do it though than how I just did it. Just like there is everything else that I do, I almost always pick the more difficult option. And I don't know why, if I do that subconsciously or what, but it's almost always what I do. Man, it does smell good. I forgot to show you guys the meal plan because I showed you guys the grocery haul in the last video, but I hadn't made my meal plan yet. I was just winging it. <laughs> so Monday, we got crock pot, honey, garlic, chicken, broccoli, and rice. And then, well, these are not really days, so we're not really having it on Monday, but I just use these days as like a number. So we have seven meals here. So we got the crock pot, honey, garlic, chicken, broccoli, and rice. Then we got air fryer, chicken thighs, uh, and then mashed taters and corn. And then we got manwiches because I, who doesn't love a good manwich? Well, manwiches are my favorite. Homemade potato wedges too. Those are my favorite. This is probably going to be my favorite meal out of all this. I know all this looks really, really good and looks like you would choose about anything over the manwiches, but I would choose manwiches over anything. Then we're going to have roasting carrots and potatoes and green beans. And then we're going to have lasagna hamburger helper. And it's a homemade, so it's not like from a box hamburger helper. I saw that on TikTok and I really want to try it because it looked really good. And we're going to pair that with garlic bread. And then down here, we're going to have hamburger hash brown casserole. We haven't had that in a while. That's my favorite ever. So, like, I would choose sandwiches, and then I would choose this one. And then we're going to have chicken and potato bake, which is another recipe I saw on TikTok that I want to try. TikTok is really awesome for recipes. Thankfully, I'm mostly on the Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez drama TikTok for you page and the recipe for you page. And that's about it. <laughs> I've got to prep out our food. Because you're just chilling. <laughs> I'm the new house cat. Because when I because <laughs> when I got the groceries and I showed you guys the the grocery haul, I didn't prep anything because I was so focused on the kiddos' closet. So we're gonna prep out our stuff real quick and just get everything in the freezer bags real quick. And then I need to jump on the closet if I'm gonna get it done today. Hey, this shows how sturdy my building is, though. If it can hold my fat honey in up. That needs to be on a uh, commercial. You want something built by Shane? Voila! It can hold an almost 200 pound man. Uh, Call 1-800-HAMMER. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you need to come up with a jingle like Stanley Steamer is your home cleaner. Tainer, you're so weird. <laughs> oh, look at Tainer here. Tainer, what daddy doing? He's a tater. He's a tater baby. <laughs> no, it'd be like. <sighs> When you have those other guys build you a kitchen counter, are you tired of your dishes doing this? Ah! <laughs> I'm gonna cut that. Oh gosh. <laughs> this is one built by Shane. <laughs> the dish is sitting up here perfectly fine. Would you buy a countertop made by Shane? Yeah. 10 out of 10. Would yeah. you buy a countertop made out of Shane? It might not made have. From Shane, not out of Shane. <laughs> it may not have the finish that you'll find at Lowe's, but it's got sturdiness like no other. Cut. You can take it to the bank. <laughs> now you cut. <laughs> I ordered one gallon freezer bags from Walmart and they substituted it with two gallon freezer bags from Walmart. So I've got these big old, they're basically sleeping bags. Like I feel like I'm tucking in the chicken thighs to tell it a bedtime story. That's how much room there is in there. But it'll have to work though. I got chicken thighs for the first time ever. I've never eaten a chicken thigh. I, they have always weirded me out. I don't know why. But with the price of groceries, chicken thighs are a lot cheaper than chicken breasts. So we're trying our hand at chicken thighs. I'm just sectioning that up and putting it in the freezer so that whenever I'm going to make a meal, I can just pull it out, defrost it, and then put it in whatever recipe I'm needing it for. I'm going to clean off my counters with the Clorox spray. I have been trying to use through a lot of my chemically sprays because I've been using the vinegar spray to clean around my house now. But with me messing with chicken and me having some of that left, I just went ahead and wiped down my countertops with the Clorox spray. Before I head off to the closet area though, I am going to touch up some areas in my kitchen and just like maintain some things. That's the only way I've been able to keep my house clean is maintaining it while I'm doing these declutter sessions. So I can't focus completely on a declutter session the entire day. I have to multitask. I have to maintain the area I've already cleaned first and then get to the new area. Me doing it that way is prevented the dishes piling up and the laundry piling up all while I'm working really, really hard on another area. So I don't feel like I'm chasing my tail doing it this way. Stepped into my life, such a magic feeling when you tore down my walls. I wish I could go back to right before you told me I'd try to change it all. But look at us now, I could have gone so far. It hurts to realize we're parted. Yeah, look at us now, this is who we are. And I just know things will never be the same We're like strangers again, again, again Shane is going to take a look at the hot water heater for me because my water has always taken a long time to get hot here in the kitchen, but it's been taking an extra long time to get hot here in the kitchen. So I have to continually let it run until it finally gets warm. And I feel like I'm wasting so much water that way. But I like to rinse off my dishes before they hit the dishwasher. I don't know. A lot of you guys have said that you do too. A lot of you guys have said that you don't know why I do that. I guess it's split down the middle in between, but I just like to rinse them off with hot water before I put them in there, especially if there's any gunk or anything. The hot water spraying on it helps me get it off beforehand because anytime I put gunky dishes in the dishwasher, they never come out clean. I showed this in one of my other videos. It is the neatest thing ever. It looks like a little flower. Look how cute. I have it sitting beside my sink. You can squeeze it 
and it comes out the bottom like the Dawn squeezable, the one that I was just using. It's you can squeeze it like. I ain't gonna waste it because that's so expensive. But you can squeeze it and it comes out the bottom, or you can set your sponge on top of here and pump it, and it'll suds up at the top and suds up the sponge. Neatest thing ever. I don't know where you find them. One of my friends gave it to me, so I have no idea. I know somebody asked me after the video I showed it in. Somebody asked me where they could get it, and Amazon has it and Walmart has it. Amazon didn't have it in stock but they had like the picture of it and everything. Walmart had it in stock, but it seemed a little pricey. I don't know if it's always that pricey or if it's just a thing where it's hard to get your hands on so they up the price, I don't know. But it is easily one of the coolest things in my house. I love it. The day it breaks will be the day I cry. I will squall real tears. Okay, this is what I got. I just pushed up my glasses. <laughs> this is what I got at Walmart for the closet. I got two boxes of these magic bag extra large ones. I got a bunch of different sizes. But these are the lar extra large ones. These are the large ones. This has six bags in it. So six large bags. I got two packs of those. And then I got two packs of the extra large bags. And there's six of those in there too. Got two packs of those. I got two packs of the singular extra large bags. And I got three of the medium bags. Do you see why I split up the videos for cost purposes? <laughs> this was not cheap. I never in my life thought I'd be paying $20 for a six pack of Glad bags, <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> Along with that, I also got some of these Avery multi-use labels. I got some of those and some Sharpies so I can label the bags. This is the brand though, it's the Magic Bag. They had, I think it was hefty ones, but they were more expensive. So these were the more affordable ones. And by affordable, I say that very loosely because like I said, it was not cheap. But I was trying to map out in my head what I needed them for and how many I thought I would need. And so that's why I got so many. I've literally got 24 big ones. And then I've got three medium ones and two singular extra large big ones. So really 26 big ones and three medium ones. For the amount of stuff I'm going to try, to vacuum seal i think this will be enough i am curious though is this legit advertising like can i really fit all of that into this i doubt it there's no way let me pull these out and see what they look like i haven't done that yet Just, let's get one of the extra large flats out These are fancy. Gosh, they're big. Okay. Okay. Oh, so it has directions on it for people like me who they know are not even going to unfold a directions paper they would put in here. They put it on the bag so we had no choice but to look at it. <laughs> okay. Wow. For these, it says I can use this for bedding and pillows. I mean, I guess as much as you can fit into it while it's flat like this, you can store in there. So I could get probably all of our blankets in here. Heck yeah, I probably have more than I need. If I have some left over, I may even get into my Christmas and Thanksgiving decor here soon and go through it and vacuum seal all the pillows and stuff and that would give me more storage where they're stored. It's about as wide as me too. Okay. It feels different from a glad bag. So I take back what I said about a glad bag. I, I was thinking this was a, a glorified glad bag. It's actually much thicker. I'm gonna have to read these directions to figure it out because it has this little sucker thing right here. This little thing that you, I think you put the vacuum hose on. But I'll have to figure it out. Actually, there's not much to figure out. It's pretty explanatory. You got open. They, they dumbed it down for me. <laughs> Easily the easiest instructions I have ever read. They even put like the little visual things with it. You got open, then we fill it. <laughs> then we seal it. And then we vacuum. So, that sounds pretty easy. I, I was about to say I don't think I can mess this up, but I'm not going to jinx it. I can mess up the dump and go crock pot recipe. I ain't jinxing it. What are y'all noticing here, by the way? 
We all know this, huh? <laughs> I've been making my bed every single day. Every day. This is the dreaded closet. It looks so similar to the girls' closet when I did the girls' closet that I took it that I wasn't going to have to do a whole lot. And I forgot how deep it is. It is a whole walk-in closet. So it was a job and a half. Like this was the hardest thing this series. I would rather go in and organize my dishes 500 times than to do this again. It took me a few tries to get it right with the vacuum sealed bags because I didn't do the first like three or four batches the right way. I just stacked them in there. I figured it out though that it's a lot easier if you lay the clothes flat. Okay, I got it sectioned off by sizes. These are the medium ones, these are the large ones, and those are the extra large ones. So if it's in here and it isn't going to be vacuum sealed, we're going to go ahead and just put it in here to get it over with. Obviously, I have a lot of clothes. I know that, you know that, they know that, he knows that, she knows that, we all know that. <laughs> we all know that at this point. So I know I have a lot of clothes, but I think a large problem with my clothes situation because my clothes is what I struggle with probably most out of my entire house. The clothes are a really big downfall for me. So while I know I have a lot and that's the first and foremost issue, along with that, I don't store my clothes properly. I've never put away my winter clothes for like the season or anything. I've never done anything with seasonal clothes. So basically that means every single piece of clothing that we own, the kids, Shane and I, it's out in our closet. Sweaters, uh, warm pajamas, seasonal coats, all of that is never put away and sectioned off during the summer. It just keeps staying in the, in the closet. So with these vacuum seal bags, I'm also going to take my seasonal clothes and vacuum seal them and put them away for the first time ever. I'm also going to be storing away our warm blankets. I'm using the heck out of these Ziploc baggies as well. Glorified Ziploc baggies. I'm using the heck out of them to make sure all my seasonal stuff is put away properly. I'm going to start with the main issue in the closet, which is me getting inside the closet. I can't get inside the closet because of that massive wall of clothes. So I'm going through every bit of that. Even this hamper here with all the socks. I'm getting rid of socks that don't have a match. Socks that don't fit anymore. Socks that have holes in them. They're all leaving. And then I'm going to make my way through the big large pile there at the door so that I can actually walk into the closet and get some things done while I'm in there. Is the state of my bedroom now I've gotten all those out so now I'm gonna work on the ones hung up Your 
so this is going to sound stupid to some people. I know. I'm fully aware of that. But I think a lot of the reason I have so many clothes is because I get tremendously excited when I find something that fits me. There's not a lot of options. Clothing options, despite what my closet says. Those are like gems I have found in places. But there's not a lot of clothes that fit my size of a woman. So when I find something, I feel like I need to grab it right then and there because I feel like I won't find something like that again for a long time. While I've been doing this series, I've not only been working my butt off, but I've been really thinking about the reasons as to why my house gets to the way it is. I've mentioned that before in this series. Along with that, I've been thinking about the areas I struggle with most in my home, which are like the clothes and stuff. I've been thinking about why that is the way that it is. And it's only been recently that I've realized that that is a lot of my problem. I don't like spending money on clothes. I don't like spending money, period. I like spending it on my kids, and that's the reason they have the amount of clothes that they have. Best for me, I wear holy clothes, like, all the time. All the time. Okay, I'm bringing out this big green tote y'all have seen before. And... I'm going to get rid of a majority in it because I'd like to get rid of that tote in a hole or use it like towards something else like maybe compile two of my little black totes into that big one if I could do that. I don't know yet but I'm going to try to get rid of most of it in here. With me coming to that realization of that's how my thought process is, I've learned that I can't go in certain areas um like ross all the time because ross is my downfall ross is full of smaller people clothing so when you find actual plus size clothing in the plus size section because usually it's not very plus size if you actually find clothes there it's like a gym and you know when like ladies used to freak out over the ty beanie babies and like they would search and search for that one particular one that they didn't have and they knew was hard to find they would get it and they would collect it and they would keep it right it sort of reminds me of that but on a deeper level because it it, obviously, it has to do with my weight and my image and my image of myself in my mind. But now that I realize that if that's not the whole problem, it does play a large part of the problem, I can combat that with not going to Ross as often and realizing that there are plenty of plus size clothing boutiques online and, and in other places like Cato and stuff that it's a that I could easily find something if I needed it and I don't need to grab everything I can because I think everything that I find out in stores like Ross and stuff are unicorns <laughs> to the plus size community. I can't even get enough footage in here uh -huh. because it, I'm talking to them because <laughs> it is that packed. Like I've been working on this thing for a solid, I mean hours and I'm not even halfway through to the back of the closet. This is easily the worst my closet has ever looked. I don't even have room to walk. It's just piles and piles and piles and piles and piles. Like I have no room to turn over and then I've got stuff pulled out here and it's just like everywhere. Out of the entire series, this is the most overwhelmed I've been. Like borderline panic attack overwhelmed. And I never want to feel this way again. Never in my own house do I want to feel this way again. Since I can't get a lot of footage, I will update you guys whenever I can see some progress. I am beginning to see a floor, but I'm still surrounded my stuff. I'm going to work on this little area though and get it like all organized and stuff which is like my extra bath stuff, extra cleaning stuff and I've got our like, I got my family's picture books and my scrapbooks of each of my kids but I'm gonna go through here and organize this really good and then make my way on out there. Can you tell I don't want to do it? Can you tell I don't want to do it? I thought this was gonna be easy. <sighs> It is not easy. It is easily the the most difficult room in this series because I don't have room to move. I don't have room to put a tripod like what it, it was worse than hoarders. It was worse than hoarders. So you guys are going to be amazed at the declutter pile. I'm not playing this game no more. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this to myself. I'm not doing it to my family, I'm not doing this. This room alone would be enough to make somebody want to be an actual minimalist. That's how bad it is. So, I'm going to just work on getting this area set up. And then I'll move on to the floor. And then that wall. And then, let's see. 
we're getting rid of so much though so we're making we're making progress it just you can't tell i hate not being able to tell that i'm making progress but uh in here it's literally impossible i won't be able to tell until i'm basically done a pro though look what i found this is my it's like christmas in here because i'm finding all, sort, all sorts of stuff all sorts of stuff my my vocabulary my words are even struggling right now this one's really good though oh snap it's like christmas because i'm finding stuff i didn't have and i'm finding decor that i literally haven't seen in a year and it's gone it's going it's leaving it's bye and i'm learning from my mistakes i'm definitely learning from my mistakes on this one we're making progress this is gonna be an eyesore but it's at least organized i've got my i've got my home decor and my christmas store decor kind of fading into each other until i get the outside storage shed this is gonna have to work here because i have absolutely no other place to put it because over here i've got totes back behind here for memory bins here we've got shoes and another tote up here there's literally no room those are the only blankets that i'm keeping out the rest of them are getting shrink wrapped or donated so this wall right here is gonna look like an eyesore but it's at least an organized eyesore and it's a decluttered eyesore very minimal stuff i kept very minimal stuff Our shrink wrap tower. Are you guys ready to see the declutter pile? Are y'all ready? Remember. All of this, every bit of this, came out of my closet. I told y'all I wasn't playing when it comes to getting rid. I got rid of everything from decor, seasonal decor, rugs, pillows, decor to pillows, regular decor, clothes. We got rid of 87 pieces of clothes, bringing our total up to almost, if not 400 pieces in this little bitty series. That's how many pieces of clothes we've cluttered. I can't believe it. Like, I cannot believe it. There are five bags of clothes here, I believe, and two bags of trash all came out of my closet this is the foam mattress uh, that we had to jigsaw down to make the girls mattresses and their bedroom makeover that's what's left of it we've got seasonal stuff over here that i just won't be able to properly store any seasonal decor or regular decor really you guys saw the eyesore that's still in my closet it's organized and it's decluttered and it's minimal but it's still there and i'm just not gonna be able to properly store anything until i get an outdoor shed which is in the works. All this decor that's going to make somebody so happy. Everything from towels to blankets to you name it is in here. So while it was really hard and really stressful and I want I wanted to cry. <laughs> I wanted to cry so bad. I couldn't hardly film in there because I couldn't even turn around. That is 
hands down the worst my closet has ever looked i think i remember saying i would never let it get that way again and that in itself is scary to me because i i'm i want to say that now but what i have now that i didn't have then is a routine that i've been managing since starting the series hopefully i'll be able to keep on that and never let it get like that again i've come to the conclusion that you can't have a mess if you don't have enough stuff to make a mess and while i still have a lot of clothes i'm not a minimalist an actual minimalist by any means i do do minimalism my way and i think that's important to understand because you can do minimalism your way too so decluttering almost 400 if not 400 pieces of clothing in a two and a half week series is a huge win for me it's huge that's that's huge 400 pieces of clothing that's huge i still do have a lot though my kids still have a lot but we have 400 pieces less than what we had before i started the series that's what i've been focusing on and that's what i'm in all about like 400 pieces is no joke i've never did a clothes declutter that big not even before youtube ever done clothes declutter that big i don't even know how that came out of the closet that's some like mary poppins stuff <laughs> this series has been one of the best things to happen to me since being on YouTube and and before YouTube I really took it seriously and I really tried my darndest and I think the results show that but I've never ended a series more fulfilled and hopeful that I'll be able to maintain all of the hard 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 work I put into this series these videos were mammoths of videos to film and edit and I'm just thankful I made it through it alive <laughs> I pray that they have in some way helped you and if in the least bit just entertained you <laughs> I appreciate your kind words your encouragement your advice all of the above I appreciate it so much and I'm 1 billion percent positive I would not be the person that I'm turning in to be without the help of you guys and for that i'll forever be grateful thank y'all for hanging out with me i hope y'all have a blessed morning even not whatever it is wherever you're at know that i love you but jesus loves you more i'll see y'all later